Howdy folks, today we'll be looking at some of the springtime amanitas of the central California coast. Most people don't realize that spring can be one of the best times to find a diversity of amanitas, but today we'll be looking at three specimens that are representative of this season. So how do we go about telling these three amanita apart? They're all superficially similar, but it's not good enough to say that they're amanita. Some are deadly poisonous, some are good edibles, and a mistake could cost you your life. So we really have to try and apply all of our observation skills in telling these three species apart. The three amanita that we've got in front of us today all look superficially similar from below. All of them have straight white stipes. All of them have vulva, these sacs of universal veil tissue at the bottom of the stipe. All of them have rings of some sort, and they all have whitish gills. An important character to keep in mind when looking at any amanita species is the texture of the surface of the stipe. On this specimen, we've got a fundamentally smooth stipe with occasional scurfs or scales below the partial veil. The partial veil is thin, tissue-like, and could be easily destroyed by incautious handling. On the middle specimen, we have pointed upright scales, almost like hairs, covering the entire lower stipe, more densely ornamented than the first species. The partial veil, while still thin and tissue-like, has square plaques of universal veil tissue around the edge, giving it a more ornamented appearance. The specimen on the right has a smoother stipe than either of the other two we've looked at, and it appears to either not have a partial veil, or have a very obscure one, or maybe one that's been rubbed off or fallen off in old age. The middle specimen has a totally different vulval type than the other two. This is what we call a cup-like or collar-like vulva. It's bulbous, but it only has a short free rim, slightly knobbed or curled, but not totally encasing, not sheath-like or bag-like the other two specimens. Now we're going to take a look at the caps of these three amanitas. They're very different from each other, and that gives us a lot of different clues about what their identities might be. One of the absolute most useful characters to observe on any amanita is whether or not the edge of the cap is what we call striate. Striate means with well-defined lines radiating out from the center of the cap towards the edge of the cap. Usually these are short, no more than a couple millimeters, but they can occasionally be up to a centimeter long. So on these three specimens, we have two striate species and one non-striate species. The cap margin of the specimen on the right doesn't have any distinct lines radiating outwards. Both of the specimens on the left have distinct radiating lines all around the edge of the cap, so we call them striate. The next characteristic that we want to pay attention to is the presence or absence and distribution of universal veil remnants on the caps. The specimen at the far right has almost no universal veil left on it. It's not apparent in any way. It's bald, just bare cap skin. The middle specimen has patches or warts of evenly distributed universal veil tissue. The specimen at the far left has a single, thick, monolithic patch of universal veil, which is sometimes called a skull cap. It's easily peelable. Finally, we'll pay attention to the color of the cap skin. The specimen on the right here is not only pale, it's got this peachy pink color to the center. The middle specimen is kind of a dull brownish yellow or tan color. And the specimen at the far left has sort of a vibrant yellow. It's a pale yellow, but it's brighter than the middle specimen. Another characteristic that can be helpful in confirming your identification is to make a cross-section of the mushroom and see if the stipe is hollow or solid. So we've taken those same three species that we had lined up earlier and making a cross-section to show you what the inside of the stipe is like. The one at the far left has a deep, long inner cavity that reaches almost to the top of the stipe. The middle specimen has a shallow cavity that runs most of the length of the stipe but is not as pronounced as the one on the left. The mushroom at the right is almost entirely solid except for a very small cavity at the base of the stipe and even that is atypical for this species. So in order from left to right we have Amanita vernicacora, the spring cacora, Amanita gemata, the gemmed Amanita, and Amanita ocreata, the destroying angel. Deadly poisonous, mildly toxic, and good edible.